We unpack. We unpack. We unpack. Coming to your live box and ego unpack. Yeah. We unpack. We unpack. We unpack. Dillian, the body snatcher white has been dropped from all the rankings after being reinstated as WBC interim champion. But I can explain. We unpack. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. If you want to become part of the gang gang digital mob, smash the like button. Shout out to the Super Chats channel donations, the Venmo donations, the Cash App, and the Patreon family. We working. Sign up for ESPN Plus using my link in the description. All my videos definitely helps the channel. Now, this is some news, and I got to unpack it. We unpack coming to you live. Dillian, the body snatcher white, no longer listed in any of the sanctioning body's rankings. Now, Dillian White has complained that he's been waiting 500, 600, 800 days, and he feels he hasn't gotten a title shot. You have to remember when he fought Anthony Joshua the first time, you know, because they fought in the amateurs and then they fought as professionals. But this was before this was early in their careers before Joshua had beaten Charles Martin for the belt. So he wasn't even a champion. Joshua wasn't. And thus, you know, Joshua knocked him out and later became a champion. And the bottom line is Dillian White had never gotten an opportunity to fight a champion. You know, some people blame Wilder, but I blame Dillian White. And I'm going to explain in this video, we unpacked. I blame Eddie Hearns. But as you can see, you know, he fought Joshua in 2015, December 2015. And it wasn't until the next year, about, you know, seven months later. In 2016, he beat Charles Martin for the IBF strap, right? So Joshua wasn't a champion. Now, just to show you what I'm talking about, the WBC rankings, this is the January 2020 rankings. So the, you know, the newest, we're in the month of January, brand new year. Wilder's the champion. It tells you all the details when he won, when he had his defense. He defended against Dominic Brazil, May 18th of last year. I covered that fight. It was at that fight. And Dillian White felt he was the mandatory, but it had already been established that Dominic Brazil was the number one mandatory. They had WBC does this. They have two mandatory sometimes, but the primary mandatory that was due up per the WBC was Brazil and Wilder knocked him out in one round. As you guys can see, the interim champion is Dillian White. And the silver champion is Daniel Dubois. WBC international champion is Philip Ergovich. Right? So, with that being said, since Dillian White is now interim champion, as him and Eddie Hearns won, because they said they won a Deontay Wilder shot, he's been removed from the rankings. Now, this may confuse some people. Let me explain. If you are a champion, you won't be placed in the rankings of sanctioning bodies. Because if that was the case, then Deontay Wilder would be in the rankings for one of Joshua's three belts, you know, and he could just climb his way to the top. But that fight never happened because obviously Anthony Joshua and Eddie Hearns didn't want it to happen, you know. So it's not as simple as another fellow champion just jumping in the rankings. You're a champion, so you're considered kind of an equal. And unifications, they're, they're not mandated the same, you know, as these. The rankings are primarily for guys who are ranked and deserving, you know, contenders or former champions or just ranked guys, really good guys that get ranked. Some of them aren't really good guys, you know, and they get ranked for the purposes of, you know, they're due up and they're ready to challenge for a title. So as you see, the top three is Tyson Fury. This is WBC. 
Tyson Fury, Alexander Usyk, Oscar Rivas, and in at number four is Luis Ortiz. Five is is Andy Ruiz. So top five, Andy Ruiz makes that. Six is Adam Kalnaki, and so on and so forth. You look all the way down, you do not see Dillian White. Again, because he's champion. So that's the WBC. WBA. This is as of the new year, December 31st, you know, the last day. These are their rankings. WBA for heavyweight. One, Trevor Bryant. Two, Alexander Usyk. Adam Kaunaki. And Trevor Bryant is the international champ. Ortiz is four. Andy Ruiz is five. Robert Helene is, etc. You look through it. You don't see Dillian White. That's the top 15 of the WBA. Newest rankings that are available. IBF. Joshua has that belt. He beat Andy Ruiz in Saudi Arabia to reclaim his titles. As of Friday, January 10th, 2020. Kubrat Pulev, number one. Number two is an open, not rated space. Three is Adam Kaunaki. Four is Ajit Kabiel. Five is Andy Ruiz. Six is Alexander Usyk, Michael Hunter, Philip Ergovich, Gerald Washington, Povetkin, Charles Martin, Joseph Parker, Tom Schwartz, Zangief, or whoever that is, and Otto Wallen. So that's the top 15 with the IBF, no Dillian White. So it leads me to my video. This is Dillian White got what he wanted, but then again, he didn't because what this means is Dillian White is not ranked. Okay, first of all, you got We Unpack coming to you live. There's only two champions at heavyweight. Wilder, WBC belt, had it since 2015, 2016. You know, I could check for you. Um, Wilder had the belt, won the title January 17th, 2015. Okay, so five years basically, right? So he has been a longstanding champion, undefeated, hasn't lost. Joshua lost, but then got his titles back, right? Those are the only two champions, Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder. Now, I understand Dillian White and Eddie Hearn, they're putting up a fuss and saying, oh, we want to fight, we want to fight. But the WBC, they made him the mandatory and the interim champion officially, and he's been reinstated. I know Dillian White had his uh, situation with the, with the failed drug test. Right? Wilder Fury 2. Dillian White had the situation with um, the failed drug test and somehow got it cleared for, from UCAD. So they said, okay. And then they got reinstated. But in doing so, in being reinstated and elevated as like the full interim champion and mandatory, right? then that means he can't be ranked. So now Dillian White, he's in a tough position because who's going to give him a shot? He, there's only two guys to get a title shot from to begin with. And the WBC already told you, you won't fight. You won't fight Wilder Fury winner until 2021. Right here. Boom. Cover all the tracks. They told him last year, talk sport which is based out of the UK delay boxing news. The WBC confirms Dillian white will have to wait until 2021 for a mandatory shot at Deontay Wilder or Tyson Fury, despite being cleared by UCAD, Michael Benson. Mm -mm -mm. The WBC have declared that Dillian white will have to wait until February, 2021 for his mandatory world title shot after being cleared by UCAD. So he had the adverse test. It took months for whatever reason to resolve. It was really a CD process with UCAD, uh, Oscar Rivas and team and Yvonne Michelle. Nobody knew about his secret hearings and all that. And then the day before he was already scheduled to fight in Saudi Arabia, he was already flew out there and everything. And the day before the fight, somehow UCAD comes and, you know, says, Everything's good, you know, no B sample came about, whatever. But Eddie Hearn, they have overplayed their hand, people. They have overplayed their hand because 
now Dillian White got what he wanted, and now he's only ranked the WBC route. So he's followed the WBC protocol, and he's obviously going the WBC route, but because Wilder and Tyson Fury have a big blockbuster fight, because the WBC explicitly tells you in their rule set that their committee has the ultimate say like they they want to be fair and they they want to have uh mandatory fights and you know make sure the mandatory gets the uh, opportunity but basically the way it's written the literature the wbc and i'm sure all the sanctioning bodies but particularly the wbc they have it spelled out so they can basically veto and make their own rules and do whatever they want as long as the committee approves it henceforth why we see canelo alvarez as the franchise champion and um vasil lomachenko as a franchise champion because they ultimately their team and their committee and their organization they can vote on it and push new ideas forth and kind of veto situations or for example if canelo is fighting triple g and they deem it's better for boxing and it's a big fight for boxing then they're not going to enforce triple g to fight then mandatory jorge sebastian highland and canelo and triple g have both agreed to fight each other in a mexican independence day weekend so they'll have a hearing about it and say okay but the winner has to fight their mandatory or whatever or then you know in the situation with canelo he got the belt he inherited the charlo problems which was the mandatory and neither one of them fought charlo so realistically they have it uh, explicitly written out where they can, you know, finagle, vote, change things. And they ultimately have the ultimate say what happens with their belt. Period. Bad news for Dillian White because he played this hand and Eddie Hearn and they begged and said, oh, 400 days, 500 days, 600 days. We've been waiting a thousand days. And this is why now it's starting to make more sense. This is why Eddie Hearn is so angry and dillian white's doing all this extra congratulations to deontay wilder who has been awarded a special belt by the wbc the wbc world's biggest coward belt to be known as the wbc wbc belt for successfully avoiding me wilder's not avoiding him and he's like oh i've been waiting over 800 days they listen i feel not one bit sorry for dillian white and we'll, let's break it down. I've already done this, so I shouldn't really have to do it again. But uh, let's talk about it. Dominic Brazil was the mandatory. Boom. He was ordered to fight Dominic Brazil. Dillian White, Dominic Brazil. This is Sky Sports, UK media. Look at the date. 12-2. He fought Chisora. Dillian White, Dominic Brazil ordered to fight by WBC. I could take it back further than that. This is from January of last year, so a full year ago. Dillian White and Dominic Brazil opened to fight heavyweight fight talks. White has welcomed the battle. Okay, so in January of 2019, January 18th to be exact, he said he was down. Dillian White has flown out to America. So who did Wilder end up fighting last year? That's right, Dominic Brazil. So you had... From January 19th, you should have fought against Dominic Brazil, who really had a little bit of a layoff, if I'm not mistaken, before getting a Wilder fight. We'll take it further back than that. This is all Sky Sports, people. New media. Sky Sports. This was from 2018. August 25th, 2018. Dominic Brazil said he would welcome a fight with Dillian White, right? The article tells you the Californian was installed. Look at it right here. Was installed as the mandatory challenger for Deontay Wilder's WBC title after he beat Eric Molina last November. Much to the dismay of White, who is the WBC's number one contender. So the UK, because I'm getting this from the UK fans. They, they're the ones saying that Dillian White's being wronged in 800 days and all this. This UK article was Sky Sports. You guys get pay-per-views through Sky Sports for Dillian White fights. 
through box office this sky sport from 2018 the first paragraph says that dominic brazil it tells you was installed as the mandatory eddie hearn you guys are letting eddie hearn and rematch room and dillian white sway the vote and try to rewrite history but the people who lived it and reported on it when it happened it doesn't work that way this article is telling you in the very first paragraph that dominic brazil was the primary number one mandatory much to the dismay of why okay there's a difference between being angry about it and a reality but like the article says dominic brazil would welcome a fight against dillian white way back in 2018 did he fight dominic brazil he could have took dominic brazil it says you know i thought of the dillian white fight and myself was going to happen this year brazil said to sky sports He's bound with the situation with the WBC and his silver belt. I have the WBC mandatory. You see that? I only thought it was right for him and myself, so White and myself, to get in the ring and square it off as the fans would love to see it. So hopefully that fight happens in the near future. It's definitely up to Dillian White. I'm a fan pleaser. If the fans want it, I'm going to be the guy that gives it. I'm in a situation where the belts are beautiful and I want to hold the belts by all means. But at the same time, I want to please the fans. If they want to see it, I'm going to make it happen. So he's saying it very bluntly. Me and Dillian White can battle for the number one spot to secure the water fight. This was a guy who beat Joshua or Joshua beat him and beat Dillian White. This would have been a good fight. But guess what? Eddie Hearns and Dillian White, they didn't make the fight. They Dillian White in the UK is supposed to have all this money, you know. Oh, we got the biggest budget and all this stuff. That was in 2018. Remember that. That's why I don't feel bad for it because you have to know the history. So in 2018, who did he fight? Okay, let's see. Lucas Brown, Joseph Parker coming off of a loss to Joshua, and Derek Chisora, part two. So he had three fights and not one of them was Dominic Brazil. That was one option for Dillian White to get his title shot. Wilder ended up fighting the guy who was his number one mandatory, which was Dominic Brazil. Could have been Dillian White had he beaten Dominic Brazil. Okay, Dillian White, Luis Ortiz, WBC. We got action. ESPN. Boom. Smash the like button. You never know. You never know. Wow. April 24th, 2018. Dan Raphael with ESPN. Dillian White, Luis Ortiz, Eliminator, ordered as the WBC provides title status update. So they said the organization ordered a final heavyweight title eliminate elimination fight between england's dillian white and miami base luis ortiz for the right to become the divisions say it with me second mandatory child can y'all see this all oh, this new media stuff is beautiful the division's second mandatory challenger behind Who's that? Dominique Brazil, who Wilder actually fought for the right to challenge Titleist. So Eddie Hearn and Dillian White keep spinning this like they've been shamed and wrong and shammed and exiled and hidden from an opportunity. Dillian White had the opportunity to face Dominic Brazil to clear up the 1A, 1B situation with a mandatory. He fought three people that no one wanted to see him fight. Derek Chisora, right? Joseph Parker coming off of a loss to Joshua in a boring fight. And Lucas Brown. But he didn't fight Dominic Brazil. Then, also that year, like I said, I made videos about this too. The WBC ordered him to fight Luis Ortiz. He didn't fight Luis Ortiz. Look, here's excuses. Here's why Dillian has it. Oh, this is this is not an excuse. They're probably breaking down the same thing that I'm breaking down. 
man, this is just sad. Like, look, Deontay Wilder on Dillian White. Luis Ortiz beats him every time. Wilder also said, which you can find on YouTube, Wilder said that if you fight against Luis Ortiz, I can vouch that he's a good fighter. I can vouch for him. If you fight him and beat him, you have my word. I'll make it happen that me and you fight. Don't you worry. So he could have, Dillian White could have went the Dominic Brazil route to satisfy the primary mandatory and the number one contender situation, 1A, 1B situation. Didn't fight him. Fought all these other people. He could have listened to the WBC when they ordered him to fight Dominic Brazil. He could have listened to the WBC when they ordered him to fight Luis Ortiz. He could have took Wilder upon his word and he says, fight Luis Ortiz. I'll make sure it happens. He didn't do that. So I don't understand why people, you know, they. that's why I'm making the video we unpacked, right? They must not know. I don't feel sorry for Dillian White. He, he he has had opportunities at a title shot. Also in 2018. Told you, Eddie Hearn. This is how he's being moved. Dillian White versus Kubrat Pulev. IBF orders heavyweights to fight, says Eddie Hearn. But as soon as Kubrat Pulev of Bulgaria, he has a Bulgarian, he has a Bulgarian, um, promoter or at, there's a bulgarian company we'll say called epic sports and entertainment they won the purse bid so look the ibf ordered dillian white for a final eliminator you see it news is being broadcast ibf orders dillian white cuba puller for a final eliminator but as soon as a bulgarian company won the purse bid and wanted to stage the fight because if you win a purse bid it's like an auction you could put the fight where you want by a certain date you know and you just follow the the particular rules of the IBF for the purse split and this and that. As soon as the Bulgarian company won, Eddie Hearn pulled out because they lost the auction. They lost the, the purse bid. So they didn't want to fight on Kubrat Pulev's turf in Bulgaria. Right? So that's another final eliminator where he could have, and I'll get to that in a second. You see it. Kubrat Pulev launches astonishing attack on Dillian White and Eddie Hearn. He was pissed because they he thought he had a fight. Kubrat Pulev has launched an, launched an attack. This is in 2018 again. After the surprise announcement that British fighter had agreed to fight Joseph Parker, Pulev had been ordered to fight in a final eliminator with White, with White for the right to be the mandatory challenger for the IBF. However, after the fight went to purse bid, which White's promoter, Hearn, Eddie Hearns, lost, negotiations failed to advance. White has repeatedly said he would fight anyone in the division, but Pulev has now accused him of doing everything possible to avoid fighting him. Quote, I was expecting Dillian White and his team to run away from the fight, but I didn't expect from them to be such bullsh artists, Pulev said in a statement. They are extreme manipulators and plain schizophrenics. I can't believe what I'm hearing and what a tricky way they choose to run away from the fight in Bulgaria to, to corroborate everything I've been saying. We unpacked. Oh my gosh. The whole time Hearn kept talking to circles about negotiations, about how they are still trying to bring me to the UK. All this while a date and place was already announced by the winner of the purse bid, us. So this company was, you know, a Bulgarian company and they were backing Pulev. He said it was won by us. Pulev had been due to fight Joshua and IBF, blah, blah, blah. We want, he says, we won the IBF purse bid. So the Bulgarian company with almost double the money than that they offered. So they, whatever the purse bid, the winning bid was, they matched by two times Eddie Hearn's offer. Nobody wants to fight Dillian. You are a delusional man. First of all, I never refuse and I still want to fight with you. Dillian, if Hearn is misleading you somehow, let me tell you personally, I am still waiting for you in Bulgaria to help you get out of the delusion and bring you back to earth. White refused to dwell on the situation with Pulev telling ESPN, quote, I let Eddie deal with all that. He's the one that deals with the route. He puts the pins up and I knock them down. Boom. I feel no mercy. No, no sympathy for 
he could have fought Kubrat Pulev to become Joshua because Joshua has the IBF. Now, the funny, but wait, there's more, right? Watch. I told you. So he pulled out of an eliminator because they didn't want to fight in Bulgaria. <sighs> Bam. Tottenham Hotspur Stadium is leading race to host Anthony Joshua versus Kubrat Pulev in May. This was in January 18th. You see? January 18th, 2020. So it's common knowledge that it says Hotspur Stadium remains the front runner to host Anthony Joshua's potential world title clash with IBF mandatory challenger Kubrat Pulev in May. So it looks like this is a likely opponent for Joshua, who is back champion. He just defeated Ruiz in Saudi Arabia to get his belts back. And this is his likely opponent, right? So had Dillian White not pulled out of the purse bid because he didn't want to fight. He didn't want to fight in Bulgaria. And he didn't, you know, he didn't want to fight on another, the Bulgarian promoters, like kind of terms and, and ha give them the rights. And, and Eddie Hearn probably did this too, because Eddie Hearn wanted it to be a rematch room card. So he didn't want them to be running it and he just has the fighter in it. So he yanked Kubrat Pulev, just like he later yanked the next person on the, on the list for Kubrat Pulev was Gerald Miller, who was signed with Eddie Hearn. Gerald Miller also lost the purse bid to Kubrat Pulev, and then he yanked Ger Gerald Miller. He yanked Gerald Miller from the fight and didn't give him the opportunity, and he would later fail a drug test. So for all this crying and stuff from Dillian White's side, right? Look, ESPN, told you, you got to know your facts. All this, this uh, moaning from... Eddie Hearn and Dillian White, they put themselves in this position, people. Big Baby Miller won't fight Kubrat Pulev, July. So after Dillian White declined the fight because he didn't want, he didn't want to give up, the matchroom didn't want to give up the rights. They didn't want Dillian White to fight in Bulgaria. They wanted total control of the fight and they lost the purse bid. They yanked Dillian White and then made him fight Joseph Parker off a loss trying to make money because they thought that was a money fight and something they can force on on box office pay-per-view then the next person on the rankings was gerald miller who was also with eddie hearn at the time and big baby miller you see won't fight kubrat pulliff so basically eddie hearn yanked two rematch room fighters at that time from the kubrat pulliff fight because pulliff's camp and his side his team basically won the fight and they were going to put it in um bulgaria so between the the all the things that Dillian White could have done to get Wilder one champ there's only I told you there's only two champions in the heavyweight division Joshua and Wilder so I just told you all the things Dillian White could have done to get Wilder Luis Ortiz listen to the WBC listen to Wilder fight Luis Ortiz who was calling you out and down to fight you I made several videos I was pushing for the fight you could have fought Dominique Brazil to clear up the 1A, 1B, 2 mandatory thing. He did none of this. They all, they told you, so the WBC gave you final eliminators, the IBF gave you final eliminator, and now that these people who went through the pro process and the protocol, like Kubrat Pulev, are now due up for the mandatory and likely to get a title shot as the mandatory, then how you how you angry? So I don't want to hear miss me with all the 800 days and all that. Pulev stayed the course. He was down to fight Dillian, down to fight Gerald Miller. They got pulled out. They got yanked. He remained a mandatory, and now he's probably gonna fight Joshua at Tottenham Stadium. You know, Dominic Brazil got his crack at Wilder. Look, Gerald Big Baby Miller turns down Kubrat Pulev fight. See, you got to know the history. Dominic Brazil did everything he was supposed to do to stay the mandatory. Gerald Miller passed on fight with Kubrat Pulev. This is Eddie Hearn in rematch room. 
Pulev happy to bring Gerald Miller to Bulgaria? They didn't want Eddie Hearn didn't want to. He didn't like it's like a spoiled kid or something like he didn't want to lose the purse bid and he lost it. He didn't want to lose control of the fight. So he just made his own fight. Dillian White versus Joseph Parker. So don't the, how are you going to complain now that you're not getting title shots when you backed out of title eliminators? You didn't listen to the WBC. Didn't listen to the IBF, didn't follow through with the eliminators, didn't listen to Deontay Wilder, who told you personal paths that you could take to get the shot with him. You know, it's 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 funny. It's funny how that works. White to fight Luis Ortiz. All you have to do is simple searches. All you have to do is simple searches. Talk sport. Look. It's too easy for me. 2020 is going to be an ugly year for old media. Give me some harder work. It's easy work. Talk sport. UK based. Challenge issue. Deontay Wilder. This is the power. Listen, this is the power of new media. And this is the power of digital mob. This is the power of the Internet. Simple searches. We leave the breadcrumbs. We leave the paper trails so you can connect the dots. Talk sport. Challenge issued. Deontay Wilder says he will fight Dillian White if he beats his potential next opponent, Luis Ortiz. He said fight Luis Ortiz and look. Where's the actual quote? See, the WBC heavyweight champion has previously made it clear He's under no obligation to face White at any point in the near future, but has always stated he would do so. Has always, key word, operative word being always stated he would do so if the 30-year-old first conquered Ortiz. And he said it again. It says, now that bout is appearing to be a possibility, which Eddie Hearn never made, so it wasn't a possibility, with the Cuban having accepted White's challenge. So Ortiz was about that life. For a fight December 22nd in London, quote, I'm a man of my word, Wilder told the boxing voice after hearing the news, quote, if he can get through Luis Ortiz, then he's got me no doubt. That's respectable. Anyone that fights Ortiz is going to get respect from me. But guess what? Eddie Hearns nor Dillian White took the man Wilder and what he had to say by face value. All these dudes in the UK, Tyson Fury, Dillian White. You know, Eddie Hearns and Joshua hasn't said so much about Luis Ortiz, like to berate him. But most of these other guys, um, Sam Jones, Joe Joyce's trainer, they keep saying Luis Ortiz is old and he's rusty and he's really 168 years old. But one thing that is happening is nobody is fighting him except for Wilder. Nobody with something to lose, a, a great ranking, a lot of money, you know, a reputation, uh, a potential future title shot. Nobody with a name other than Wilder is fighting Luis Ortiz, and we know why. And here's more paper trail for you guys. This is bad. Send the contract. Ruthless Cuban heavyweight Luis Ortiz accepts December 22nd date to fight Dillian White in London. Luis Ortiz disputed this and called White out for a bout on the undercard of Deontay Wilder versus Tyson Fury on December 1st, to which Dillian White replied, suggesting that they meet on December 22nd in London instead. Now, Luis Ortiz has responded once and for all, proclaiming that he is more than happy to travel to fight Dillian White on that date. After much thought and consideration, I accept your challenge, Ortiz told the boxing scene. If you won't come down to the USA, then I'll step off of the Wilder Fury card. This man had a place against Travis Kaufman, a card that I covered as credential media. Luis Ortiz was on a mega card and offered to step off of a major Wilder Fury Showtime pay-per-view card to fight Dillian White. He said, I'll fly over to the UK and fight you in your own backyard. Done deal. Enough talking that rubbish you speak. Send over the contract and I'm there. Now you've got yourself a real problem, son. So now what are you going to do? 
It is well known that Dillian White is also currently in negotiations to rematch Derek Chisora on December 22nd. However, the pair are yet to come close to agreeing to a deal. As a result, White has now offered the date to Ortiz and he has accepted. So, to this day, Wilder voice, to this day, we have not seen Dillian White fight against Luis Ortiz, the old man. Bro, the UK looking bad, bro. And guess who Dillian White fought on December 22nd? Let me get, oh, December 22nd. And they were even having problems with negotiations because Derek Chisora wanted more money or something, but they still forced this fight. Instead of fighting Luis Ortiz, who says, send the contract, I'll come see you. This is Eddie Hearn's rematch room. That's why they're called rematch room and Dillian White's problem. If he's not getting a title shot for a thousand days, this is their doing. You can't just make up your own rules like Willie Beeman, not do final eliminators, not take Wilder, you know, the champ and listen to what he's telling you. He says, if you fight Ortiz, you got me. Ortiz called you out. Dominic Brazil called you out. You didn't make no effort to really make those fights. You rematched a guy you had already beaten, even though I thought he lost that fight. But two years ago, he had already fought Derek Chisora. Man, case closed. New media, we unpack. I told you. So this is why I don't weep and feel sorry for the Dillian White not getting a title shot this year. Case closed. We unpack. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.